Hey y'all, this is Joe out here in the shed. Uh, I'm starting to get all my components together for the solar system we're going to be running out at the cabin. And I thought I'd share with you as this stuff comes in what I've got. Um, my 250 watt solar panels, I did the tracking on and saw this weekend they arrived at the terminal uh, with the truck line so I can go out tomorrow and pick those up. Uh, so that's the solar panels. These are the batteries I'm going to be using. These are uh, 108 amp hour gel cell batteries. I've got four of them that are 12 volt. I will run them in a 24 volt power bank. So those batteries are two years old but they were well taken care of and they rock. Two of them are no good but four of them are awesome. Uh, let's see. That's the 8-gauge wire I'm going to be running from the charge controller to the batteries. Um, here's a 100-amp circuit breaker going from the charge controller to the battery bank. And some blade fuses. Not really that important for this. But let me show you some of the stuff I got. Let me do the first, open up the first box here. Alright, so the first thing is going to be an Outback charge controller. Um, all the paperwork and all the goodies that I got to learn with. This is the Flex Max 80. It's an 80 amp charge controller 150 volts uh, let me get this thing out of here this will obviously be an integral part <laughs> uh, well it's a little heavier than I thought it would be There you go. That's the Flex Max 80. Really pretty. That was not cheap. Now, I will be leaving links for everything I bought down here at Amazon. Whether I bought them from Amazon or not, I'll leave a link that you can buy it off of Amazon. But, that's pretty. I like it. Plenty of room for me to grow if I want to out there. And uh, I'm anxious to learn more about it and get it set up. I'll obviously be uh, doing videos as I set everything up and can explain things a little bit better. But that's the first part. Then the next item this one out of the way. Get this one. Looks like Maybe. I won't be using this, but grommets and instruction. An inverter with the remote control. This is a 2000 watt, 4000 peak. Uh, 24 volt DC to AC power inverter. That's what this is.
heavy duty. I like it. And I like it. It's got lugs. It's got lugs here to actually hook up the power. That's my inverter I'm going to be using out there. It's not a pure sine wave inverter, but I didn't need to spend the extra $150 on that uh, for just the cabin. I'm not going to be, it's not going to be a refrigerator or anything like that. It's still just a cabin. I can always upgrade later if I want to. So, that's big item number two. <laughs> so, let me show you kind of big item number three. So this part is a converter. This will run my coming out of the battery bank is going to be 24 volts DC direct current. That inverter will convert or invert <laughs> the 24 volts DC into 110 volt AC. So we can run, you know, any of our AC appliances that I want to run. This is a converter. And I'm going to have DC lighting in there. 12 volt DC lighting, 12 volt fan, things like that. So I'm getting 24 volts out of the battery bank because it's more efficient. I'm converting that to AC with this. I'm convert stepping it down from 24. 4 volts to 12 volts so I can run all my 12 volt lighting and everything so those are the major appliances <laughs> the major components in my solar system that I need panels charge controller batter, battery bank inverter and converter now there are many Fuses I'm going to be using, uh, wiring. Now, my panels are going to be wired in 48 volt. Um, I've got a run of about 50 feet that the panels are going to have to make before they get to the charge controller. So, the reason why you want to get your voltage up as high as you can is you can run cheaper wire. If I left this as a 12 volt system to go 50 feet, I'd probably have to use four or six gauge wire. Uh, if I did 24 volts on the solar panels to run 50 feet, I'd have to do eight gauge. And that's pretty expensive stuff. I mean, this, this was 10 feet of eight gauge and it was 20 some dollars with the lugs. But running it at 48 volts, I can use 10 gauge wire, 10 AWG wire, to run from the solar panels to the charge controller. So that's why you want to get as much voltage, you know, set it up that way as you can. I'll be running series and parallel on the solar panels, and I'll show you how I do that. Then, from the charge controller to the battery bank I'm going to be running 8 AWG that's what this stuff is bought for so that's going to go to the batteries from the batteries the, the batteries are going to be wired like I said in series and parallel as well now I have hold on just a minute all right so 10 gauge from the panels to the charge controller. 8 gauge from the charge controller to the battery bank. 1 gauge from the battery bank to the inverter. And all the batteries will be wired with this 1 gauge. Being 24 volts, I really only need to do, I mean I could get away with 4 gauge if I wanted to. But I'm doing one gauge so I can upgrade things if I want to. I have one gauge cable. I made the lugs for it. And it will be used to go 
to wire the batteries in series and in parallel will be the one gauge wire and to go from the battery bank to the inverter will be one gauge wire more than what it's called for but you can't really have too much wire too big a wire <laughs> you can have too small and start a fire but you can't have too big a wire and I have some of that one gauge from another project I'm going to use it for doing all the wiring in this battery bank and that's pretty much it now the going between let me see if I get this right because I know people are going to be watching this going from the panels to the charge controller I'm going to have a 20 amp fuse going from the charge controller to the battery bank I'm gonna have a hundred a hundred amp fuse going from the battery bank to the inverter will be a hundred amp fuse or hundred amp circuit breaker because I could potentially send 83 amps to it um, that's how many amps would come out of my batteries to the inverter but I'm also going to have a switch that I can isolate the batteries from the inverter if I ever need to work on something and I'm going to be able to pull the fuse from the solar panels to the uh, charge controller I'll be able to disconnect those and I can pull the fuse from the charge controller to the battery bank so everything could be isolated if I needed to work on something or upgrade something that's the plan <laughs> but those are all of the components I'm using so far and I'm still waiting on stuff to come in it's going to be a couple weeks before we get out there build the racks and I get everything set up but I'm really anxious to do it and I told y'all I would show you everything I'm using try to explain a little bit about my thoughts in how to put it together in case y'all had different ideas and wanted me to do something different <laughs> but this is Joe out here in my shed showing off what I'm going to be using for my uh, solar system out at the off-grid cabin I hope this helped. Remember to like, comment, share this, uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed, <laughs> you know, all those kind of things. Because this stuff, I'm going to tell you what, it's not cheap. At the end of this, once I get this set up, I'll do a whole cost breakdown. But I'm telling you, just this system, we're probably going to be in... The $1,500 range. I'm out.